Here at 10 o'clock, one of the two people shot and beaten at a Mur Murfreesboro gas station has died from this afternoon. Thank you for- Bro's down, he got shot. Damn, the bro's down, he got shot. Sounded you like somebody was at your door just with a pistol, but it was just louder than that. At around 2.30 Wednesday afternoon, Murfreesboro police say two men pulled into this 7-Eleven gas station in a black pickup truck. From there, two men pulled up in a Mercedes, a silver Mercedes. A confrontation ensued, and then there were gunshots. And the shooters were the two men inside that black truck. Police say the men shot the two men inside that Mercedes and then started beating them up. Show your face! Show your face, please! With dirt on top! Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, make sure you check us out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash hookah anonymous underscore. You guys been telling us to create one for the longest, so we recently created a community where we will upload videos that we can't share on YouTube due to their guidelines, but we'll also be dropping the latest to their first behind the scenes information that you wouldn't find anywhere else on our socials. So make sure you become a member, and after you do that, head over to our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore and follow us there. Now without further ado, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now. An Atlanta man who was also an upcoming rapper who went viral for his mugshot was released from prison after the situation hit social media and he was killed just days after. Now just like the situation with the guy by the name of T Slick from Chicago who just did 11 years in prison and was released then shot and killed shortly after less than a year later sometimes it make you wonder should they just have stayed in jail and I know that sounds crazy but as crazy as it is we're seeing way too many situations where these guys are finally let out of jail and shortly after, their life is taken from them due to the streets. Crazy. Now it's a trend going around on social media where mugshots are going viral over men and women who are arrested and social media find them attractive. The first one I can remember is the guy by the name of Jeremy Meeks who set this whole trend and since then, it's been a thing. We will see another guy go viral by the name of Makai Alante Lucky and both of them would immediately get snatched up by multiple model companies and brands and receiving brand deals where they almost immediately change their lives. This is what was looking to be the same fate of upcoming Atlanta rapper Vani 500 as a platform by the name of The Bitch Gossip reported that Vani was expected to make up to $200,000 in total due to the amount of top fashion brands that was interested in him modeling for their company. I'm unsure how accurate that is, but I don't put it past because we've seen the last two prison bays get out of jail and do the same exact thing. Now when Vani went viral for his mugshot, girls were drooling and offering to go as far as bail him out based upon his mugshot alone. On Facebook, a couple of females will have a few things to say as the post under his mugshot would say, quote, I got his bond, he just know he fine. Whatever y'all say he did, he didn't do, laughing emojis, and how much is his bond? Now the magic question has been, what was he locked up for? Even though it didn't matter to most of these women, but upon research, it shows that Vonnie was arrested for purchase, possession, manufacture, distribution, or sell of marijuana, operating motor vehicle without registration or valid license plate, possession of firearm, knife during commission of a crime, which are some pretty serious charges. Now, ironically enough, I don't know if it was because of social media or what, but Vani bonded out of Cobb County Jail just a few days after being arrested, and after bonding out, he would use his sudden social media fame to his advantage to post new music to get some attention on his songs. One of the platforms he would use was ATL Up Next. They reported on the shooting and also paid their tributes to the rapper as they would take to their Instagram story to post a picture of him and caption it saying, quote, Rest in peace, bro. Don't know you personally, but you showed the page mad love. Every time you tapped in, you wanted an instant post, paid ready, and went viral every time. This sad as F. We want to see everybody from the city healthy and winning. Y'all be safe. Now let's take a look at what they're saying happened to Vani 500. It's not exactly clear what the motive was, but Vani was shot and killed at a gas station 
in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, after having a confrontation with other attendees. An article that identifies a man who was shot and killed will detail what happened and state that a man along with another man was shot at a 7-Eleven gas station after the dispute was had over ownership of a car. The shooting took place at a 7-Eleven on Joe B. Jackson Parkway Wednesday afternoon, May 15th, 2024. Witnesses say that a silver Mercedes-Benz pulled into the parking lot occupied by two men who confronted another two individuals, gunshots were fired, and then a fight happened shortly after. One of the guys that occupied the silver Benz was shot and was left on the ground while the other man was jumped by the other two guys who they confronted in the beginning. Upon further investigation, we learned that the confrontation was due to a Chrysler 200 car that was towed from Georgia that belonged to the men in the silver Mercedes. Investigators say that a black Ford F-150 pulled into the 7-Eleven parking lot and it appeared to be towing a Chrysler 200 at the time. The Ford stopped in the parking lot because it appeared to be having mechanical issues, and I'm sure it's due to the trip that it just took to Georgia. Now, the Ford was occupied by two brothers identified as the Charco brothers, 26-year-old Juan Charco and his brother. The Benz was occupied by two other brothers, including 23-year-old Devon Lawrence, aka Vaughnie 500, and his brother. Investigators say Vaughnie previously bought the car from one of the Charco brothers. For whatever reason, the car was towed by the Chalco brothers all the way from Georgia to Tennessee. Varney and his brother tracked the car all the way to the 7-Eleven and found it, and that's when they confronted the Chalco brothers. Juan Chalco would fire shots into the car before Varney and his brother can get out, and that's when the brothers got out the car afterwards. Varney was hit, and so was his brother. Varney would fall on the floor fighting for his life, and his brother was shot in his arm and proceeded to get jumped by the Chalco brothers. Somehow he managed to make it to the 7-Eleven and he got help. Officers were called to the scene around 2.30 p.m. and arrived shortly after. They found Varney on the floor suffering from multiple gunshot wounds and he was taken to a local hospital where he was later pronounced deceased. Varney's brother who was shot in the arm was flown to a local hospital in a helicopter but he was listed in stable condition. 26-year-old Juan Charco was charged with second degree M an attempted second degree M in connection with the case and Juan's brother was only questioned and then released, I'm assuming because he probably didn't fire any shots. Now Juan Charco is being held on a $1.5 million bond and is expected to appear in court on July 17, 2024 in Rutherford County. Now this is an unfortunate situation, actually a very unfortunate situation because it was literally over something so petty, right? Something so minuscule. Um, it's also strange because just three days ago, Vonnie released a song called Closed Coffin. What a coincidence. Now, the moral of the story is, I guess everything happened because there was a disagreement about the car. Chocolate Brothers went from Tennessee to Georgia to pick up the car, then towed the car from Georgia all the way back to Tennessee. Now, we don't know if it was some type of payment arrangement that these guys had. You know, sometimes you make an agreement, um, making payments. And then if you don't make the payments, the car get towed, right? I don't know if maybe the Chaco Brothers was hired by another company to get the car. And maybe it was towed. Who knows? But they went and got the car. They took it from Georgia all, all the way to Tennessee. Um, the truck broke down. They was already tracking the car. I guess they was trying to take it back. And to their surprise, when they got to the 7-Eleven, shots was fired. Um, as I was reading the articles, it stated that they was actually still in the car when the shots was fired. So I don't know if he... One of the Chaco brothers, Juan Chaco, he shot into the car because he feared for his life or he was scared or maybe he was just a shoot first type of person. Who knows? Right. But we do know that before anything could happen, before it was any fights, it was shots that was fired first. All right. Now, here's another thing that I want to speak on. I think we are our own worst enemies when it comes to, you know, our culture, black and everything. Because before we even knew what was going on, automatically people were saying that it was out of jealousy, um, people was hating on them, right? I think that's all programmed behavior. When something happened to somebody and you automatically think that it was one of your own, that's programmed behavior. Before you even find out the motive, before you even find out what happened, you're already thinking that somebody took this man's life because they was jealous. And we found out that that's not even the case. Now, here's a few posts from a platform that actually posted about it. And they said that he was hated on. Um, people were jealous of him. They was envious because he just got out. He was going viral and he was about to make a lot of money. 
automatically they assume that somebody took his life because they were just envious of him, right? And it was one of our own. It was somebody black. But here's what they had to say. One of the people would say, quote, probably because he went viral, people be so jealous, it's sad. There's room for all of us to win. Another user would say, quote, black folks are going to finish each other with guns. This is why we Nigerians are scared to be friends with them because every little disagreement they bring out gun. When would they learn and stop this BS? Just look at how handsome young this guy is, killed over what? No, it is why we stay clear out their way because we love life. Then another user would say, quote, Atlanta full of haters, I promise. Someone else would say, quote, jealousy and envy, can't win for it. His whole life was about to change. Now someone snuffed it. Do better, young people. Another group of people would say, quote, someone was hating, that's crazy. He just got back out like, what the hell? Y'all can't just see people live their best life. They probably tried to rob him because he was going famous winning. Now, this is what I'm saying. It's a bunch of people making assumptions and they already assume that this man was hated on. Somebody tried to rob him. Um, they took his life because they were jealous. All these narratives that we are programmed to believe about ourselves. Before you even know the real motive, before you even know the real story, you're already blaming somebody that looked like you because you are programmed to believe that. Right? You're already programmed to believe that somebody in your culture took somebody's life because that's what you believe before you even know the motive. And the backwards part about it is this lady is Nigerian saying that they, quote unquote, they don't like mixing with black people. It's, it, it doesn't make sense. Nigerian black. Anyway, y'all jump in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. I found this interesting because it was a lot of rumors going around about the story. A lot of platforms pretty much putting it out there with not too much context. So everybody's running with their own theory and narrative, but come and find out, you know, this is the real story. So y'all jump in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. Rest in peace to Vani 500 and my condolences go out to his family. Y'all jump in the comments, let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.